following is the agenda for the regular borough council meeting of the borough of Compton Lakes Mayor and Council and Municipal Corporation in the County of Jose. The meeting will begin at 7 30 p.m. May 22nd, 2024, in the Municipal Building 25 Lenox Avenue. Compton Lakes, New Jersey, consistent with the Open Public Meetings Act, the meeting will be open for public comment and shall be according to the terms and conditions of the borough municipal code and holidays. Please stand for a flag salute. Yeah. Please remain standing. A moment of silence for Liz, our clerk's husband, Eric, who passed away. In conformance with the Open Public Meeting Law, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this regular meeting through notice posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, mailed to all, have requested and paid for same, and published in the suburban tracks. Roll call, please. Yep. <coughs> Hello? Hi. Okay. You're on speaker now, Bob. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. You, you there? Hi, everybody. Okay. The meeting starts. <coughs> May, sir. Here. Council President DeWine will be late. He'll be late, yes. Councilman Cruz? Councilman Cruz, yep. Councilman McKen? Here. Councilman Miller? Here. Councilman Palazzori? Here. Councilman Here. With this evening is our borough attorney, Dave Parker, and our borough administrator, Okay, I'm going to jump around a little bit only because some of the, some of the people have, if the Masonic Lodge would like to make their presentation now, that would be a good time. Thank you for seeing us tonight. We uh, we do appreciate you. Just taking need your time. name and address. That's all. Oh, uh, no, I don't actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Do I need to do that or it doesn't need to? Go. No. No. Okay. Thank you for seeing us tonight and <laughs> taking the time to uh, consider our, our, our situation and our, our presentation. Basically, in a nutshell, I, I guess you've been given documents by Michael. We want to take stewardship of the property known as Wilderness Island, uh, and uh, I may I may have been. Uh, more optimistic about the, what can be developed from there. <laughs> but at the very least, we want to clean it up, plant some milkweeds, put our sign up in the front. We ask for your blessing. Oh, so, okay, you know, Michael has the plan in front of him. A as you know, we've gone back and forth a little bit. There's a lot, not much you can really do there because of the uh, flood. Uh, the sign is there, so you are able to use that sign if they wanted to re revitalize that sign. Um, I, if anybody has any questions, concerns about it? Uh, um, just, just a, since I'm more used to public speaking, this, uh, I just want to share with the council. Uh, we did go to the Environmental Protection Committee meeting, um, uh, spoke to them in detail. But in, in an overview of what we're discussing is that that property used to be owned by the Masons. <coughs> oh, and then okay. it was sold. So we have some historical connection to it. And as a good service fee, we'd like to help out and see that it's maintained. Uh, to that end, uh, we felt that this is a great program for the community, whether that be the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, and we'll, we'll splurge for uh, on classy soup steaks, okay, and, uh, and chips for the kids if we can get them to rally with us okay. and take some ownership in their town. I think it's a great idea, and I didn't know you guys own that property, so it's even yeah, better. Yeah, back in the 50s. Did anybody, I heard somebody have a concern? I just want to make sure that we understood that uh, they, they've been to the Environmental Protection Committee meeting mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Councilman Kilberg was there as well. And um, I think I think it's been approved, correct? Well, I think it was back before me, right? In December? Yes. November, December. So I, I don't see any issue with it. So good luck. If you, I can help you anyway, reach out. You know, you got my number. We'll make sure that we're in compliance yep. and we this federally funded uh, property. So uh, we're not looking to build anything there. We're just looking to help keep, keep it clean. Uh, we have other residents that volunteer with the river cleanup base. Mm -hmm. 
So I know that we'll have an interaction with them, because obviously the river runs through it, but uh, we want to be there to help out more. If we can get the uh, community engaged in it a little bit, and like I said, let the next generation know this is your town. Good, and, and your contact would be Michael. Yes. Great, yeah, we have no issues. Thank you for your, for your offer. Thank, for thanks for making the offer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Note that Councilman DeWine uh, just came in. 7:31. 7:31. You couldn't be here a minute earlier, but no one had to do it. Apparently not. I guess this could make it work. That walk from the high school here. It took a while. So it's my pleasure to swear in two new officers to our fire volunteer fire department. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit later about how vital our volunteer fire department is. But I'm so happy to see new members coming in all the time. So bring both members up with your families or anybody else you want to please. Okay. I state your names. I do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States, support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, or the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. I will bear true faith and allegiance, will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, to the same, to the governments established, to the governments established in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state. And the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, I will faithfully, I will faithfully, impartially, and impartially, and justly, and justly, perform all the duties of, perform all the duties of, on the lake's volunteer fire department, on the lake's volunteer fire department, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, so help me God, so help me God. Congratulations to thank you. And you can give them to the clerk when you're done. Thanks, guys, again for volunteering. It's important to us. Thank you. Okay, anybody who wants to leave, I'm sort of swearing in, can. If you'd like to stay for the whole meeting, you're more than welcome to stay for the whole meeting. As they run to the door. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Hold on one sec. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, leave it open. No, no. Leave it open, please. Yeah, Thank no. you. We all good, Liz? Everything good? Yeah, the screen, there's a something came over on the screen, but Michael said it's okay. It's recording. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion to open the meeting for public comments. So moved. Council President Thine. Second. Councilman Vennon, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against. Anyone from the public like to address? Please step up. This is my first time doing this, so uh, just, need, just need your name and address. That's all I need. For. All right, uh, I live at 124 Leading Street. My name is Anthony Piatanza. Here, um, the reason I'm here is I have a tree in front of my house. <coughs> that is a hazard. Um, the issue is it's frankly huge. It's at the edge of my driveway, right by the skirt, to get out. When you back out, you can't see coming or going either way. Um, I've been we moved here in 2020, uh, right before COVID, and I've been fighting this fight since then. Uh, the first email I sent out was May 26th of 2020, and I spoke to Councilwoman Ken a couple, a couple, times. couple, days, a couple days ago also. Um, it's frustrating to, to to deal with. I've had you know the change of commission out, and the, the answer that I get 
is, well, it's a good tree, but it's in a bad spot. So it's a homeowner, right? And as somebody that works in insurance, that doesn't mean it's a good tree. That means it's, that, that means it's a hazard, right? I have a two-year-old son, um, and I'm going to do whatever I have to do to make sure he's okay. I come out to my car to go to work, go to the gym, go hang out with friends, and I'm pulling branches the size of me off of it. That's not a good tree, right? And uh, from my understanding from the people in my neighborhood, the tree was supposedly su going to get taken down, but then the old homeowner refused. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. That's the story I'm told. Um, so whatever I have to do to try to get it taken away, that's, that's what I'm, I'm here to talk about. All right, so I'll answer at the end, but I got I got all your information, and I'll, I'm going to answer you in two minutes. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Anyone else from the public like to address? Please step up. <clears throat> Randy Hitt, 443 Montclair Avenue. Speaking for the Shade Tree Commission and addressing this gentleman and his wife, it's been years since he wanted that tree gone. He's absolutely correct. It's the nicest, biggest, beautifulest tree on the north part of Legion. I've been reluctant to take it down. I'm the gentleman who hasn't taken it down. Um, but right now, this is this <coughs> spring's <coughs> removal list. Mrs. Kent, Councilwoman Kent, had called me and gave me your phone number. But this is tomato planting season, so I've been planting tomatoes. I haven't got to the removal list yet. This tree is on the removal list. Um, Just keep it this way. Oh, I can't, I can't talk to you? No. no. Okay. And um, when I saw that the tree is lifting up the sidewalk, really that's the homeowner, the way the town works, that's the homeowner's responsibility. When it's lifting up his driveway <coughs> apron, that's still the homeowner's. But when it's pushing the curb out or lifting the road up, that's a different story. So that's why the tree is being put on the removal list this year, this spring. Um, so that segues me into my next discussion, Mr. Mayor, with you, uh, the last meeting, when you said that you have no idea what I do with the Shakespeare Commission. I That's said. one of the things that I do. I know exactly. I'm oh, sorry. Ben. Unless that was just a sarcasm from you, ben. which it could have been. But that's really not your job from the podium to be sarcastic to your volunteers. So I tossed it. You won on that one because I tossed the turn for two weeks. And I wrote so much down, but I don't think I have to go through it. So maybe just a little apology for your sarcasm would be nice. That would be helpful. But as far as. The gentleman's tree, it's on the removal list and will be taken care of within a month or two. Okay, thank you. That's all. Anyone else from the public like to address? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public session? Motion. Councilman Bennett? Second. Councilwoman Kilberg, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? So to answer your question, uh, Anthony, it uh, looks like it's on the list to be removed this spring. Uh, the shade tree is actually the group that we rely on to kind of mark those trees and do that. We do as a town pay to remove the, to get it out, but that would work. You would work out between that and the shade tree commission. So um, I think it, you got what you're asking for. So that's a good thing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hinton, um, you just discussed. Thank you for explaining about the tree. It's a little strange that you're accusing me of sarcasm, but every time you're up there, you're you're having sarcasm with me. So it goes both ways. Okay. I'm not apologizing for sarcasm, nor am I asking for an apology from you for the sarcasm you give me. So it goes both ways. Um, and that's all we have for open session. Motion to approve the following minutes. Regular meeting minutes, May 8th. Closed session minutes, May 8th. So moved. Council President DeLine, Councilwoman Kilber, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Let's see. Have an update? Okay. Councilwoman Kent abstained. Uh, authorizing payment of bills as listed below. Motion. Councilman Bennett. Second. Councilwoman Kent, all in favor? Aye. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, does anybody need any of the consent agendas removed? 24 224. 24 224. 224. 224. Go. 224? Yes, please. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Liz. Where is the mayor and the borough council of the borough of Compton Lakes have the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions? Where is the mayor and council of the borough of Compton Lakes? Does desire to remove resolutions for individual action from that agenda. From that agenda. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved. Resolution 24 222 through 24 237 when going to remove it. 24 224. Motion to approve the resolutions. Motion. Council President Dwine, Councilman Bennon, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Uh, resolution 24-224. Calling for the modernization of the Open Public Records Act and the swift passage of S290-84045. Question? Can, we just, can you just explain it, what it is that we're, the details of the amendments? Yes, th thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, and I'll, I'll let the borough attorney take it after me. But in in short, the New Jersey legislature for years has been looking at uh, the Open Public Records Act and and possible reforms for the for the act. Um, due to the reason of people and companies using OPRA for marketing purposes, um, you know, the borough clerk sees uh, several OPRAs a week with regards to uh, police accident reports, uh, construction permits, and these companies are essentially using that data to sell it to other people. And it's really become burdensome on the municipality's part for OPRA. Um, if there's anything I'm missing, certainly. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is to control the data mining done by commercial entities that not anything to do with citizens, the private rights of citizens, but to put a control on the data mining that um, is just such a burden to this municipality's clerk and all of the uh, government records. What are the uh, like identifiers or controls that are being put in place? That I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the specifics of it, um, but I, I believe it's limited to the commercial entities that are um, without a, uh, a, a private interest in things. But I can't. I, I don't know this. We don't know how they're it. making that determination, though. Um, I, I, it would be in the language. I have not read the language of it. And what is our resolution saying, basically? Oh, it just it just supports it, and and would be sent to the uh, to the governor for um, to uh, ask him to sign it. Any other discussion? It, it has no. And, and if I may, uh, both. Both chambers of the legislature uh, did pass the bill, and it's currently with the governor for the for his signature. So our rezo is a little bit late in the process. Um, it only just came to us from the Municipal Clerks Association of New Jersey two weeks ago. So um, you know the League of Municipal Municipalities is in support of this, and sent out an e-blast to the to the towns, uh, encouraging us to support it. So the league is backing the bill. And like I said, it's with the governor right now for his signature. But we do know that there's something in place preventing it from blocking access by private or people that have an interest. They're really just targeting like mass commercial. Yeah, it really has to do with the selling of the data. Yep. Um, so what, what we can do is we'll send the bill text to the governing body so you can take a closer look at it. Okay. Thank you. And I apologize, I should know, because my law partner is one of the prime sponsors. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, motion to approve 24-224. Uh, so Council President Klein. Second. Councilwoman Kilberg, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Uh, whenever you're ready, Liz, second. Second. Okay, ordinances for final adoption. It's an advertisement posted on the municipal bulletin board. Ordinance 24-23 amending the code of the borough of Compton Lake to provide for the administration of the requirement imposed by the state of New Jersey for lead-based paint inspections of certain residential rented dwellings 
and to establish fees for inspection. Motion to open the meeting for a couple of comments on Ordinance 24-23. So Motion. moved. Councilwoman Polidori, Councilman Venon, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone to like to address just this ordinance? Please start. We're ready to hit 443 monthly round. Um, this is going to affect me. My house was built in the 1890s. Oh, it's one of those houses. Um, but it's been since. <coughs> Ready to hit 443 Muckle Air Oh, did I do something wrong? I see fingers going. We'll clarify that. Yeah. Um, but the question here is it's been renovated. So, I mean, I still have to go through the inspection, correct? Uh, this is correct. only rental properties. But then you get a certificate that you're clean. But then you have to go through it every couple of years again. Is that the, the way the legislation reads? I, but you're not a rental. Are you a rental property? Excuse me. I, this is for rental properties. Two family house. I have. Yes. Right. But okay. So you're renting. Yes. Okay. So then, uh, yes, that does affect you. Yes. Okay. But then again, they don't even sell lead paint. You can't even buy lead paint. To paint. I mean, how ridiculous is that? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely, Randy. If you rent out a unit that was built prior to 1978, correct, and you have to do it within the first two years of the adoption of law, you have to get a lead safe certificate, correct. Then you have to do it upon change of tenancy for every time you change a tenant or every three years. I don't know how lead paint <laughs> is going to reappear in a three-year yeah, time period. It's a good yeah. question. Completely agree, but this is another one of DEP's brainchilds that became state law. That became gone through the legislature, and somebody's not thinking clearly that once you've identified that there's not lead paint in on the walls or anything else like that, that it's not going to suddenly appear yeah, yeah. in three years. So, but that's the law. So what you're asking is, yeah, I think what they're saying is every three years you would have to get a certificate. That's ridiculous. That sounds. So, like but that. I understand your position and where where you guys are on it yeah. and what you have to do. But. Just because I talk to people at Sherwin Williams, we don't even sell that thing anymore. You know, you can't go to Home Depot, you can't go up to the service and buy it. So, thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the public like to address this? Seeing no one, motion to close the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 24 23. So, so moved. Council President DeWine, Councilwoman Polidori, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Against. I'm going to vote now. No. Okay. Yep. Got that list? She's a no. I, 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 for what? No, we're closing the meeting. Well, that was oh, oh, yeah, oh, we didn't I'm sorry. I, oh, I apologize. No. Okay. You can vote no out. next. I'll vote no next. Motion to approve ordinance 24 23 for final adoption. Need I'll make a motion. Council President DeLine. Second. Uh, Councilman Venon, roll call, please. Councilwoman Kent. No. Councilwoman Kilburn. Yes. Councilwoman Polidori. We have yeah. <laughs> Can I jump no. Can I jump? Sure. Again, this is pretty close to our tree protection <clears throat> ordinance. We have to pass. Um, we have to, this right? Law. We mm -hmm. have to be. We have to be in compliance with the I don't state. Agree with you that. If you're upset I, about the law, blame the state. But we have to do what we have to do well, that, on I the municipal side. Needed the clarification mm -hmm. of that. There's nothing we can do anyway. Correct. So yes. Yes. Okay. Councilman Ben. Yes. Councilman Cruz? Yes. Councilman Gorn? Yes. Okay. Sure. I thought okay. Yes. Okay. 24 24. Amending Chapter 2 of the Revised General Ordinances and Revising the Organizational Structure of the Police Department. Motion to open the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 24 24. So Motion. Moved. Councilwoman Polidori, Councilman Venon, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone would like to address just this ordinance? Please step up. This is the only one that's been identified. Ready Head 443 Montclair Avenue. Um, all due respect to our borough administrator, I checked the paper, I checked out here in the hallway, I watched council meetings, and I picked up the paper here. It shows. This is a uh, restructuring of the police department, correct? It just shows one chief, not less than one, no more than two police captains. It doesn't explain nowhere that I've asked why. 
Why are we doing this? Why is this being done? I asked at the last meeting, you kind of mumbled something. I don't want to be sarcastic, but that's what happened. That's sarcastic. And then our administrator mumbled something, and the meeting was closed. And I never got a straight answer. I'd like to have a straight answer. So the chief has asked for reorganization of his department because of the changing population in town, and we're going to entertain uh, restructuring the department. That doesn't mean we're adding officers. It doesn't include that yet. It's just restructuring at this point. Okay. What well, God bless Councilman Bill Begg's soul. He was the last captain, and then for like 20 years, we didn't have a captain. Then we have a captain now. God bless him. He's a good guy. But now we could possibly have another captain? It's possible. We could. We couldn't. That's right. I mean, we're only 2.97 square miles. How many chiefs do we need? How many captains? How much brass do we need in our police department? I mean, it seems a little excessive. To me. And I never still got an explanation as I, to why we're doing it. I just gave you the explanation. The chief, has the, asked chief to re, the chief has asked to reorganize his department. That's what he's asking to do. To do that, you have to change the, the ordinance in place. OK, thank you. Anybody well, else? Again. Well, again. Anyone else from the public like to address just this ordinance? No. Motion to close the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 24-24. So moved. Council President Thaline. Second. Councilwoman Kilberg. All in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Motion to approve Ordinance 24-24 for final adoption. So Motion. Council President uh, Thaline. Councilman Bennon. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Ken? Yes. Councilwoman Kilberg? Yes. Councilwoman Thaline? Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Councilman Cruz? Yes. Councilman Delon? Yes. Ordinance 2425 is Chapter 2 of the Revised General Ordinances and requiring commissioners of the new development agency to be residents of the borough of the Commonwealth. Motion to open the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 24 25. Motion. Council President Delon? Second. Count, uh, Councilwoman Kilberg, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address just 24-25? Please step up. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Bennett? Yes. Councilman Delaney? Yes. Councilman Montclair Avenue. Um, this one I'm in favor of because uh, redevelopment of our town is so critical, whereas we want the residents of the town on that board so that they live in the town that they worked on for redevelopment. And uh, presently, we have someone on that board that does not live in town, who's a good man, did a good job. But I agree that with this ordinance that you should really live in town if you're going to make decisions that are going to affect the town for the next 50 years. I'm in favor of this one. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to address this ordinance 24-25? Seeing no one, motion to close the meeting for public comments on ordinance 24-25. Motion. Councilman Bennett? Second. Councilwoman Kilberg? Um, I'd like to add that I, when I reread this ordinance, I thought we were doing all our boards and committees had to live in town. I, you know, just picking out one board member is isolating one individual for the same reason to get rid of him. Why, are, why aren't we addressing all the boards in town if we're so <coughs> adamant? on and asking this one gentleman to step off it should be fair across the board we shouldn't be picking and choosing which board because now we're, we're, we're headhunting is what we're basically what we're doing we're headhunting the conversation was very specifically detailed in in saying that this was for this because it applies to this and that everything else will be revisited at a future date but we were working on this for now okay and i don't agree with that idea i think if we're going to do it we have to do it all together all right so i'll weigh in couple things is the, the 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 planning board is governed by the municipal land use law the zoning board is governed by the municipal land use law historic preservation that does have carve out for non-residents is is a statute established at the state that allows for certain class members not to be residents okay mm -hmm. everything else that is covered under the boards and committees in in the borough Ponte lakes requires the residency of a, a, a in the borough of the lakes. 
Um, I don't, is that true? I don't think that, that is correct. So all the other boards are That's correct. required? Yeah. Correct. Okay. The fact that there's a health department member <coughs> that is a member of that health department board or board of health that has not been a resident for some time doesn't excuse the fact that we have not been properly um, properly executing the law itself. Okay. So everything else, if anything, this comes into compliance with what how we govern the rest of the boards and the committees that are that are not otherwise controlled by the municipal land use law or other state law so really it's it's just this particular board i know there was a little discussion about um a member of the library board of trustees but ultimately they are a resident of the borough of pompton lakes they own a property in borough of pompton lakes that is different than any of any of this um so again the idea that it it, it we should be fixing other other boards and committees as part of this. All the other boards and committees are already properly in line with requiring a residency, with exception of Historic Preservation Commission. But again, those are carve outs that are already identified by state law. And thank you for that explanation, because maybe I, I misunderstood, but in histo we'll use historic, and I'm not bringing anybody by name, there's requirements to be certain classes on that board. Correct. And if you're not that class, then it doesn't fall. Then you. It, then you, if if you're not one of those like I, I don't know if it's like a class A, a class B, B member, or whatever it is, if you're not one of those assigned members, and you, so and you're not a resident of Pompton Lakes, you cannot be on historic preservation. It's only right. those particular class members that you would be permitted not to be a resident of Pompton Lakes, and then you can also be on the historic preservation Correct. commission. And there is a slight carve out for the the planning board. Right. Let me set that aside. That there is an employee of the borough that can be appointed on the planning board. They are not required to be a, a resident of the borough as long as they're an employee of the borough. Right. So I just want to make sure everybody understands. You know, when we're talking all boards, the historic board is one of those boards that doesn't have an individual who lives in town who fits those criteria of, of the other departments. Um, and it, it's a board that's not covered, I don't think, under our. Residency law. It's not. We already have a separate. The, the historic preservation is governed under six different law than the rest of our boards and committees. Right. So I just want to make everybody aware of that that there is another board involved with this, and then of course, it's enforcement of the whole thing too, which we have to do. Yes. Um, you know, and that brings a whole other level to this. So that's what I'm throwing out there. Okay. Motion to approve ordinance 24-25 for final adoption. Motion. Councilwoman Polidori. Second. Councilwoman Gilbert. Roll call, please. Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Cruz? Yes. Councilman Blind? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Under my report, I have some appointments. A motion to appoint uh, Councilman Ekvenen as Commissioner of the Pompton Lakes Redevelopment Agency on expired term to end December 31st, 2024. I have a motion. Motion. Councilwoman Kent. Second. Councilwoman Kilberg. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay. I also have another one that's not on here that I'd like to appoint. Motion to appoint uh, Melissa Huha as a commissioner to the library board. I don't have expiration of term, would be December 31st, 2024. Can I have a motion? Motion. motion. Uh, Councilwoman um, Paladori. Councilwoman Councilman Bannon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay. Okay under my report uh, I got to start with um, we had a very moving uh, ceremony at the firehouse on Sunday we did have a, a fireman that died on the job 50 years ago downtown Raymond Cahill there's a memorial for him here at off the Hamburg Turnpike his son and daughter came up and gave a very moving speech about what had happened and how he passed away and we forget our volunteers all of them are putting their life on the line every time they go out to do a job it could be a simple call and what really rung to me was he was nine years old when his father passed away. His father was on his way to Atlantic School to pick him up. And when he got to the school, he got the alarm. So he just waved to him from the, from the playground, said, I'll see you later. And he went to the fire and never came back. You know, this is a nine-year-old son who came back. And this family lives in Texas now. They came all the way back. I got to thank the fire department for putting it on. They did a great job. It was a great ceremony, very moving. And, and it just, we kind of remember at the end of the day, all our first responders put their life on the line every single day. Um, uh, what else do I have here? 
I had a meeting yesterday with Senator Joe Panaccio. Uh, we had a nice conversation. We talked about how he can help us with our flooding issues that I've brought up before with the other mayors. I talked about the meeting I had with some other mayors. It didn't go as well as we'd like. He's going to help us set up another meeting, uh, hopefully to have more conversation and get some more people involved with the DEP and the commissioners to help us get our push forward. He understands what we're asking for. He's been our, our senator before many years ago, and he's done a good job for us, so I'm hoping he can help us with that. He's also going to help us with some funding uh, opportunities that Michael has reached out to him, so I'm hoping that works. Tomorrow I will be presenting uh, a career day for the middle school, um, but not as the mayor. I'll be presenting as a research scientist, which is my previous job before this. Uh, I'm always excited to go present to the kids. Um, I attended with most of the people up here, uh, Councilman Beggs, uh, um, a, a dinner that they had for him, well over 200 people there. It was a well-run dinner. It was nice to see people and talk about Billy. That's really what it was about, to talk about what Billy has done for this community, which was a huge thing. He, he touched so many lives in so many different ways for so many years. So, you know, when you looked around that room, there were people from 30, 40 years ago and people who just met him in the last couple of years. So that's a nice way to, to go out. And, I, and you know, I, I, to this day, we still miss him up here. So it was a nice event. Um, we did the Walk for Hope with a lot of us up here. A beautiful day. We all walked. It was a great event. They had over 150 people, I think, walking. Um, we walked from here to the Hirschfield and from Hirschfield back. A lot of vendors put out food when we got back, really just to make awareness of mental health. It's not to be hidden in the closets, but to talk about. And if you, know, if you have situations or you're struggling, to reach out. So I, I commend uh, uh, Ryan Gossinger, who runs our our uh, alliance and all the kids there was a lot of kids that showed up for this event to do that so you know it's good to see them attending that um i did a couple weddings i attended the bid meeting uh, we've had numerous conversations uh with the administration about some issues we're having and that is my report council president Dillon. thank you mayor um i also attended the walk for hope it was a great day um great energy uh two great speakers um as a veteran myself um, being able to hear about those two, two people, hearing from those two people, um, yeah. talking about the importance of mental health, especially among veterans, and, and asking for help and supporting each other. So it, it was a really, um, really moving speech. It actually hit me, hit, hit me pretty hard. Um, but again, it was thank you for Ryan Gossinger and all the volunteers that made that happen because it was a it was a phenomenal, well organized and put together event. I'm glad to be glad to have been part of it. Um, this past Monday, I attended the Municipal U Utilities Authority meeting. Um, as I announced at the last meeting, they did hold their public hearing on the consideration of um, adopting new uh, rates, um, which were going to need to be increased. That meeting went through. Uh, those rates were adopted for 2024-2025. Again, part of it is being driven by capital projects that they need to perform and two of the things that they were talking about was they've started um, into planning and design of the upgrade of the north pumping station and then also the wealth 3 pfos um, which is the chemical that needs to be treated it's now a requirement to treat that so some of that is driving the expenses the capital projects that they need to need to do as part of maintaining the water quality for the borough of pumpkin lakes um, as a result that just they just have more projects and they have to raise the, the rates as a result. Um, this was the first meeting of the new MUA superintendent, John uh, Piotrowski. Um, I believe he was a previously a, a, um, an employee of the MUA. More recently, he was in Parsippany's uh, ut uh, Water Utility Authority. So he's got experience working with a much larger water system than what we've got. And I know uh, the commissioners in particular spoke very glowingly of him and his ability to, to, to take over. Um, otherwise, it was a pretty short meeting. Uh, coming up on Sunday, June 2nd, uh, the Trails Maintenance Committee is happening at Trails Maintenance Day at 10 a.m. Uh, we meet at the uh, basically the Red Trail entrance on Lincoln Avenue, which is, again, down by the MUA at the end of Lincoln Avenue. Um, if you hit the MUA, you've gone too far at that point. And finally, I want to congratulate uh, Councilman Bennon on his appointment to the redevelopment agency. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Um, unfortunately, I had to step down because of conflicts, um, and we'll see where that goes in the future. But uh, good luck to you. Thank you. And that concludes my report. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Councilwoman Ken. 
Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as the public safety liaison and a current CERT member, I participated in an emergency communication drill using the ham radios. And what is a ham radio? I never heard of such a thing. But it is a radio that is used for non-commercial communications that allows you to speak to any other operation, evidently anywhere around the world with the proper uh, equipment, without use of internet or cell phones. And that's very important because if for some reason we have some kind of catastrophic loss or attack or something, uh, we now are able to communicate with other towns and other communities and other states, evidently. And so these radios are set up in the field and they have to be licensed by licensed operators. And we had five licensed operators um, in this drill and they're just everyday citizens, but they are licensed with, by the state of New Jersey. And so they oper we had a, a mock uh, drill. Um, and I, I'll just take something that uh, Deborah Ross, uh, she ran this along with Al Evangelista from the OEM. But this past, when, uh, this past uh, May 15th, some people saw people walking around their blocks. They thought they were lost or something, but this is what they were doing. They were taking, um, they were taking incidents. And we had a drill with the uh, OEM, the Boy Scouts, the Teen CERT team, and the drill was conducted simulating a complete communication blackout with no access to police radios or 911. Our Team CERT members and Boy Scouts acted as civilians and they gave emergency reports to the CERT members on patrol throughout various neighborhoods in town. These CERT members were then relayed messages to the local ham radio operators. And the ham radio operators passed the message out to our OEM coordinators and the ham operators. Al Evangelista acted as the emergency dispatcher in our command truck. We all had a great time doing this, and we all learned about what a ham <coughs> Uh, what a ham radio is and how it can affect us during a major disaster. But the, the most important part of this, if you take this, is that now we have another means of communication that is not connected to the internet. And that's, that's a pretty important point, which I never knew we needed, but I guess things come full circle, right? So now we're kind of back to where we started. Years ago, everybody had one. Right. Well, I, yeah, I never, I never heard. I, short wave radio, but not, not that. So anyway, and it was really a, a well-designed, um, well-designed drill. It's never been done, my understanding. So we are really one of the first towns to actually run this. And, and Al, you did a great job. Um, we had a lot of fun. I also attended the memorial service for firefighter Raymond Cahill. And I, I, I think it's important enough that I just read they, they, the fire department prepared a beautiful brochure type of thing, a handout on, on memory, uh, remembering him. Uh, it's a 50 year anniversary. And I just want to read it because I think it's important. On May 14th, 1974, Firefighter Raymond Cahill lost his life in the line of duty while fighting a basement fire in the town and country supermarket on Hamburg Turnpike. He was 49 years old with two children. We are here today to recognize the 50th anniversary of the sacrifice made by Firefighter Cahill. The Pompton Lakes Fire Department, which was founded in 1895 and incorporated in 1901, had never lost a firefighter in the line of duty until that fateful day. That day will forever be remembered in Pompton Lakes. Each year on May 14th, the anniversary of his death, Pompton Lakes Fire Department celebrates his life and sacrifice and prays for his family who are with us today. Ours is a dangerous job, which we willingly do for our beloved town and neighbors. It is in the spirit that we met here today to recognize that tradition and to honor one of our own and then they thanked us for coming. And it was a beautiful ceremony and uh, very, very touching. So uh, we do that every year. Um, I want to thank Al for his solemn and uplisting memorial service. And along with the fire department, we had the Women's Auxiliary, Pompton Lakes Police Department participated, and uh, Ray's family. I also attended the Rotary Dinner, as the mayor mentioned, with Bill Begg. And, um, there were, there were many organizations there that, that Bill supported over the years, and it was a really wonderful event. I also 
attended the Ponta Links Prevention Coalition Walk for Hope uh, with Ryan at the helm. And it was amazing to see so many support this initiative as you know mental health touches many souls so it was a wonderful thing for pompton and for our coalition group they did a great job um i was away and i didn't make the last meeting because i was at a conference but i just want to personally thank uh our pompton lakes environmental protection committee steve beggs and all the members of that committee for an amazing river cleanup program on sunday may 5th although it did rain it did not stop the volunteers from cleaning up the parks and streets and rivers and the open space lands. And I want to especially thank Councilwoman Kilberg for she took over one of my jobs that I did for many, many years. And you did a great job, Lisa, and you've organized it very well with the group. And um, there's a lot of moving parts to that. So I want to thank you very much. And it's very nice to see the borough free and clear of debris. So thank you for that. Um, the Shade Tree Commission received I, uh, 16 years now, they are Tree City USA. They received a plaque and a beautiful gold, gold pla a gold plaque and a plaque that's going to go on the signs at the entrances of the borough. Thank you very much, uh, Randy and the Shade Tree Commission for all the work that they do. And I, I wanna thank the uh, residents here. They've been very uh, patient. Shade Trees really his job is to protect the shade trees and you know, that's a, that's a tough job to do, especially when it, it's a tree that's in um, disagreement sometimes. But we're doing the right thing for the residents and we're doing the right thing for the tree. So you have to bear with us sometimes, but thank you very much for all that. And um, thank you for the MUA update. Uh, it's probably short because Lloyd wasn't there to talk. <laughs> you said that. Not I did, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, I think the rates are important and that we treat the water properly for our health. So I'm with that. And that is my report. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Kilburn has a whole page of stuff she needs to read. And I have my own too, so I'm gonna start with that first. Okay, I attended the Rotary Club's beef steak dinner in honor of Bill Bay. Um, his family was presented with the Service Above Self Award in recognition of Bill's commitment and service to his community. And I don't know anyone more deserving than him. Um, our recreation committee held a passport event for the explorers on May 10th at the Pompton Reform Church. And they all received passports and whoever, and they, whoever entered visited the country of Mexico. Um, the room was decorated and the explorers were asked to dress in that attire and they were served food from that country. <coughs> And it was very well organized, and I'm looking forward to see what country they do next. Um, I attended the Stigma Free Walk for Hope. It was a beautiful day for the event, and it was nice to see so many people participate. And thank you to Ryan Gossiker for um, putting together an amazing event. Uh, this past Sunday, I attended the Cahill 50th anniversary ceremony. I would like to thank everyone that took part in putting together such a special event. Um, it was an honor to learn about Raymond Cahill and listen to both his son Raymond and daughter Ruth speak. The ceremony was heartfelt. And I attended the library board meeting last night. Um, and we do have one person that was um, put on the board tonight and I have other people that are interested. So hopefully by next month we'll have a couple more people. Um, okay. Um, uh, I have a motion to approve the request for Veterans of Foreign Wars of the U.S. John Han Tri-County Post Number 2906 to conduct the annual Memorial Day Parade sponsored by the John Han Tri-County Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2906 and the Borough of Pompton Lakes on Sunday, May 26, 2024. Parade to assemble at 10.45 a.m. at the intersections of Lakeside and Jefferson Aves and the VFW Memorial Services to be held at 11.30 a.m. at the Veterans Memorial Park, Jefferson and Lakeside Aves. Parade will then commence en route following the services and ending at the VFW Post 2906, located at 260 Wanakew Ave, where refreshments will be served. The police department will temporarily close the, the route. Portions of this route include county roads. Notify police, fire, first aid. Can I have a second? Second. Second. Council President Dwine, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the request <laughs> of Pompton Lakes High School to close Lakeside Ave from the pond hole entrance 
to Adrian Street on Thursday, June 20th, 2024, from 5.15 p.m. to 9 p.m. for 2024 high school graduation ceremony that will commence at 6.30 p.m. Rain dates, Friday, June 21st, 2024, and Saturday, June 22nd, 2024, with a time to be determined depending upon the weather forecast. Police, fire, and first aid to be notified. Can I have a second? Second. second. Councilwoman Polidori, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Mo motion to approve the request of Pompton Lakes Recreation to close Lakeside Ave from Romaine to Elks and Perrin Ave on Sunday, September 1st, 2024. Rain date, Monday, September 2nd, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. for Pompton Day. County, police, fire, and first aid to be notified. Can I have a second? Second. Councilwoman Polidori, all in favor? Aye. Aye. A motion to waive permit fees for those vendors who hold a borough food license and wish to participate in Pompton Day. Can I have a second, please? Second. Council President DeLine, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Motion to approve the request of Lauren Vennon and surrounding neighbors to host a block party on Sun Sunset Road on Saturday, June 8, 2024, from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. Police, fire, first aid to be notified. Can I have a second? Second. Council President Dine, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Councilwoman Paul Dory. Thank you. Uh, first, I would like to welcome and thank the two new individuals that were sworn in for uh, oath of office to join our fire department this evening. I would also like to thank everyone that was involved in uh, planning the Walk for Hope. It was an event that was put together across multiple organizations, spearheaded by Ryan Gossamer of our Prevention Coalition, but we also saw a lot of community organizations pitching in um, and corporate partnerships and, uh, of course, Chef Foley preparing lunch for everyone. So it was really nice to see the turnout and uh, the speeches that were given by the <coughs> veterans were a really nice touch. So thank you to everyone that came out to support that. Um, I also attended the Rotary Dinner, so it was an honor to, it was nice to see uh, Councilman Begg honored in such a, in such a wonderful way with uh, the turnout that we had that evening. His whole family was there, his son spoke a little bit, so it was nice to see everyone together. Um, I attended the bid meeting, there was some further clarification on the discussion as far as the uh, facade and sign grants that the bid promotes, so that, pro pro uh, that program is underway again, so that gives building owners and business owners the ability to utilize uh, some bid money if they want to improve the facade or em enhance or change the signage on the front of their store. I signed this month's borough bills. Uh, I continued the conversation today with an individual that represents uh, the Flags for Heroes program. He is a veteran who has initiated the program for uh, almost all of our surrounding towns, actually Bloomingdale, Butler, Kinelon, and Booton. So I had uh, passed him off to our borough administrator with some additional questions as to the best way to implement it, what other towns have done. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to see what works, what has been successful as far as size, fees, uh, how you decide how you allocate them. So more to that, more on that to come. Um, I was happy to hear that we have some sponsorships coming in for the dog park. I saw we have some renderings for the first few corporate sponsors that will be uh, hung on the exterior around the perimeter of the dog park, which if we continue to get those sponsorships in, hopefully will create enough of a revenue stream for the improvements of the dog park to sustain itself, at least for the most part. Um, it had been done in part by open space funds and borough funds, so this will be nice to see that it can actually sustain itself through its own funding. Um, I also work with the borough administrator to assist the Elks Club of Compton Lakes in spreading out the area to which residents can drop off donations to the deployment drive. Uh, the Elks has initiated an ongoing deployment drive of personal products and um, snacks, small snack items. There's a list outside on the door. It's also been posted online. There's a collection bin in the municipal lobby. There's also a collection bin in the lobby of the Elks building. So anything anyone can drop off to help would be greatly appreciated. Um, and I had a question. I'm not sure if you're gonna include this in your report or not to our borough administrator. We received a notice in, the, in our email uh, from the DEP regarding a possible 
notice of violation for the property along the river behind the stores on Wanak Uav. Um, so I'm just interested in hearing a little bit more about how we got here and how that happened, specifically because this was brought to the attention of the <coughs> borough about a year ago. I had sent an email along with some video clips that were sent to me by a resident that was concerned about rock and gravel being moved from a, an off-premise location and then dumped along that area. And I had reached out to, at that time, our borough administrator was Paula Cozzarelli. She had reached out to the construction official in town, uh, who I had also reached out to independently myself, and we were both given the same answer. The area was inspected, the work was looked at, and everything was fine. So when it could have been addressed a year ago, and it wasn't, I'm not sure why now. We have recently had a visit from the DEP, and there seems to be an issue, or a pending issue. If I could just have some clarification on that. Um, and that is my report. Thank you. You're going to bring that up in your report, Mike? Yeah. OK. Uh, uh, Council, Councilman Bennett. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Monday evening was uh, Lakeside Middle School uh, spring concert held at the high school. I'd like to recognize Mr. Steer for his hard work with the students. Um, they sounded amazing, and we were able to have an unplanned intermission when the smoke alarm went off and the fire department had to show up. I heard it was due to a parent vaping. Um, I'd like to once again commend the Pompton Lake School District for their amazing uh, music and arts program. I'm also looking forward to the Pompton Lakes High School Spring Concert uh, tomorrow evening, Thursday evening, as well as uh, this weekend chaperoning the choir students with Mr. Napa as they perform at Carnegie Hall on Saturday evening. The Walk of Hope was very well attended. I'm so glad the, the uh, rain held off. We were talking about having uh, ponchos at the ready. Um, I also want to thank Chef Foley. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, the hot dogs on the grill were just phenomenal after a long walk like that. Uh, speaking of Prevention Coalition, um, we went, uh, Dr. P, the assistant coordinator, Ryan, the coordinator, as well as myself, went down to Atlantic City for the New Jersey Prevention Network annual conference. Uh, among other sessions, there was one uh, that was hosted by the person that wrote the article about the rise and fall of the jewel, the vapes, as well as how, how, danger, how dangerous vaping in general is. It was a very, very interesting session. Girl Scout Camporee 2024 was held at Camp Rickabear last uh, Saturday. I am a co-leader um, of my older daughter's troop. And um, again, the, the rain held off, so we, we, we lucked out. And just as we're turning the camp over to the next uh, bunch of Girl Scouts come in, the, the, uh, the rain started. So I hope, I hope it held off enough for them. Uh, up there, we were taught how to play pickleball by Paulette Brouch, as well as uh, Mary Beth Morton. So I learned the rules. It was very interesting to learn and play as well as uh, did some archery. Today, the um, New Jersey Bicycle and Pedestrian Resource Center held a webinar. I want to pick up where Councilman DeLine uh, started the ball rolling as far as um, making our community more bike and pedestrian friendly. I'll work with you to let you know what I found out today. And lastly, I want to thank Senator Pernaccio for uh, inviting me down to Trenton on Monday. I was able to see how the sausage is made, as Council President DeLine likes to say. Uh, a very interesting voting session where Senate Bill S-2594 that appropriates $2.8 million for dam maintenance and inland waterways projects was advanced, and that was uh, Senator Bucco's bill. And that's my report, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Cruz, do you have a report? Uh, I'm Mayor. I, I would love to put them on the highway right now. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't need you getting into an accident. That's good. <laughs> um, just before we go to the professional reports, just some dates to remember. We have a Memorial Day parade this uh, Sunday. Uh, we meet at the Memorial, which is next to Lakeside Bridge. The, the service is about 11 from 11:30 to 12. Then we have a parade that marches down Colfax through town and ends at the Elks Lodge, where, where there's uh, hot dogs and, and drinks for everybody. So please come out. It's going to be a beautiful day. Line the streets. Let's, I can also thank Michael for putting up the uh, new flags that we'll be marching to uh, down the streets in Pompton. So we'll back to having uh, flags on all the poles, which we used to do years ago. And now we have it back. That's a nice thing to see. Uh, we mentioned the trails maintenance. Memorial Day, Monday, May 27th. The borough is closed here. Uh, and just a reminder, primary election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Okay, uh, a professional report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Nothing. Okay, administrative report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll answer Councilwoman Polidori's question last. Um, so, uh, the Lincoln Ave Improvements Phase Two project will begin tomorrow, uh, Thursday, May 23rd. 
the milling and the milling of the roadway will be on May 23rd and May 24th, while the paving will be on Tuesday, May 28th and Wednesday, May 29th. Um, all the residents have been notified via the mail. Uh, we sent out a reverse 911, and we're working with our police department to uh, maintain traffic control for that project. Uh, the project for Howard Street started today. The vendor is doing ADA curb ramp upgrades up until the week of June 1st, at which point we will then be milling and paving the roadway, which should take approximately one to two days. So that should be a nice project when it's all said and done. I'd like to echo the mayor's comments and thank Jake and Mark Sunny for volunteering their time and hanging all of the American flags on Colfax Ave. So that's a great improvement, and I think it'll be well received for the parade on, on Sunday. The borough tonight, uh, the governing body tonight, awarded the bid for the Ackerman Place and Hirschfield Street Improvements Project. The borough engineer and I will be having a pre-construction meeting with the contractor, and we expect that project to kick off uh, sometime in the next month. So that's another project that's coming up, as well as the Dawes Highway Improvements Project, which is the full milling and paving of Dawes Highway. That project is under engineering review, and we're hoping to pave that road this fall. Does that go over the bridge or up to the bridge? Up to the bridge. Up to the bridge. Lastly, uh, today the borough submitted a grant in the amount of $500,000 to Senator Panaccio's office uh, for consideration of a state budget appropriation in the 2024 state of New Jersey budget. It would be a direct line item which would fund, uh, which would in part assist funding for the replacement of the DPW garage. So we thank the senator for his consideration with that. And then to, to respond to Councilwoman Paladuri's question, uh, we, did, we did have a site meeting with the DEP Land Use Enforcement Bureau last week. I met with them on site with the borough engineer. The DEP has two notice, uh, two incident reports, excuse me, for several parcels of property behind Max Bar uh, and the hardware store. So there are several parcels of property that they're looking into. I have a report here that I will send to the governing body tonight. Uh, the site Essentially, the site investigation determined that there are notices of violations <coughs> that will be issued for the property. Uh, there's a variety of issues with fill in the riparian zone, uh, putting fill along the riverbank, uh, the clear cutting of trees, et cetera, et cetera. So we're working with our borough engineer very seriously to address these concerns and to preemptively come up with a restoration plan because ultimately I think that's what the DEP will uh, hand down to us is to order us to facilitate a restoration plan. So we're proactively working on that. And uh, we'll, we'll be in further communication once we receive any formal notification from the DEP. I'm disappointed that this was brought to the attention of the borough a year ago and nothing was done about it. Well, there was continu continuous site investigations. I don't think there was ever a determination made at that point. Um, the, the private property owners that are affected by this uh, apparently did not respond to three notices sent to them. So this is why they contacted us. Okay. Any questions for administration? Uh, I just want, Mike, first of all, I want to thank Michael because after I met with the senator yesterday, he told me that the cutoff date for the asking for the money is tomorrow. So Michael had to put all this together today wow. to get it to him tonight. So I thank him for doing that. We did get it out. Uh, hopefully he'll entertain the idea because it would be a big boost to, to redo the, uh, the the DPW building. So hopefully we get some money from that. Um, any other questions for administration? No? Okay. Uh, workshop. Let's we'll start with the bamboo. And before you even start with the bamboo, just today, I, and Michael knows this already, I received a call from an individual who has an empty property, one of the houses that came down where bamboo is running amok on that property and is now going all over the neighbor's property. So bamboo is an issue in this town and it's becoming worse. So that's why we talk about it. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, just for some context, this normally wouldn't be something that would be brought up in any other municipality. But the fact that we have a lot of state-owned vacant properties, it seems to have generated a bunch of complaints that I've received over the last few months. So in response to the complaints, uh, our borough attorney provided a draft ordinance to prohibit running bamboo. And I just want to 
explain there's two types of bamboo. There's running bamboo and, uh, you know, not, household. Not, not running bamboo. bamboo. Not running bamboo. <laughs> Anyway, the draft ordinance essentially states that the planting of running bamboo on any property in the borough is prohibited. And if you're found to plant it after this ordinance has been adopted, you'd be issued a property maintenance summons. Um, and then the ordinance further describes that any bamboo that was previously planted uh, prior to the adoption of such ordinance would essentially be grandfathered in, but the property owner must uh, must uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not encroach the uh, bamboo onto the uh, adjacent property. So if they're found to be encroaching, they would be issued a notice of violation. So we think that's kind of a uh, a compromise with grandfathering some people in that might have it for aesthetic purposes. Um, so in other words, if they have it on their property because it grows, I guess like a weed. I don't have bamboo, but and it spreads to somebody else's property, they would be issued a summons for that. Absolutely. Okay. And they would have to remove it. Okay. Uh, on the, the property, not they can keep it on their property. Correct. On the other property. Correct. Furthermore, the uh, the ordinance uh, prescribes that the uh, the running of bamboo on any plot of land, premises, or place uh, would be subject to a 10-day notice to abate, and then the violation fee is $100 per day if the violation continues. So I just wanted to bring this up to the governing body and get everyone's feeling on it and if it was something that we wanted to move forward with. How's everybody feel about it? I, I support it. I think it's a good idea. I think we're in line pretty much with, there's some state law around that. I think there's state legislation around who can even sell it or where you can even plant it. It's super invasive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult to get rid of. We, yes. What are we doing with public property? Because we actually have um, what must have been a small patch at one time that's gotten exponentially larger off the side of Joe Brill. And that strip at the end of Walnut, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. We would probably have to just take care of that ourselves. Uh, I believe that it probably is a state-owned property, so I'll have to talk with the construction official on how we would deal with that. But it could be a, a very difficult situation considering it's the state of New Jersey. So it's it's something we might just have to take out ourselves. We should issue that notice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to the. Everybody good with that? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, workshop discussion. So I think I'll, I'll hand it off to Michael first. And then. So I just wanted to bring up workshop to the governing body again. Uh, we adopted Ordinance 2408 to essentially incorporate the workshop session into the meeting. I think when we incorporated it there might have been a little confusion as to if the workshop was for one meeting a month or for both and the determination from the borough attorney was that it's for both so I just wanted to reiterate that and ask the governing body if anyone has any concerns we can certainly amend the ordinance to prohibit the number of topics the length of the topics or move the session in the beginning of the meeting or the end of the meeting uh, essentially just to to reconfirm that this is the intent and if anyone has any questions uh, you know certainly let me know so my only question is from the last time I, we so we put this in place for the council specifically so that we have the opportunity to discuss things together without violating quorum um, I like to see it moved before the voting on resolutions and ordinances right because sometimes we have questions and we want to talk about that um, it seems silly to vote on them before we've had a chance to discuss them so my concern is that these can get time consuming. I, I, you know, I was under the impression when we put this in place that we would do it once a month. If we have a concern, it's always brought up in the administrator's report and we can discuss anything at that point. Um, it doesn't have to be in a workshop forum. Uh, so I would like to see, you know, I have no issue with a workshop once a month. I'd like to see some limits. I don't want to see a list of seven things there, you know, talking half hour on each one. That's, a, that's a, an increasing the meaning a couple hours. Um, and that's where I have an issue with it. I don't agree with reducing I, or limiting it. Well, well, I think that if we if we only have one a month, that will make it get bigger. Because then if we have more issues, like right tonight we have, well, this included is four. But if we did it once a month, we might have eight. And then how do you say that we can't talk about, well, we can only talk about this, but we can't talk about that. You then you're picking, yeah. So restricted from talking about, and, and be, I know that, Mayor, you have some concerns about this, but this is this is for the council. So it should be up to us as to how we feel about it, or the time, or right. The so the council will make a determination, yeah. right? That's why we're talking. Um, 
I like it. I like it twice for that reason because then you're going to get too much stuff in one. Well, do we um, want to limit it in? in I I don't think that we should. You know, it. I, we've done it before where we started talking about something and we just couldn't resolve it. So we moved on to the next time and maybe we should keep with that and not, you know, yeah, but then we'd have to do that. Talk in, about in a, something process would be have to be a time or a number yeah, or because I, just yeah, I don't it, think so. that we should talk about one topic for a half hour. That's too long. So, I, we haven't had it. I mean, it's it's been no. working fine since we've implemented it. I'm not even sure why we're well, actually spending more time but, talking about not spending time on workshops that we already talked about. Well, I think like we've had some heated discussions, so it's time to like nix it and move on to the next meeting because then you're you come back with a cooler head and everybody can, you know what I mean, better articulate what they really want. So I just think it's anybody else. So I'll weigh in on yeah, a couple sure. things. Um, I have no issue with having it twice a month. I, Originally, I thought our understanding was that it would be once a month, but I think twice a month works totally fine. Um, I actually disagree a little bit on Councilwoman's Polidori's point of moving the workshop up, because it's my understanding that this workshop discussions are related to things that are pending, getting some guidance related to something that the council is looking to do or something that the administrator needs guidance on, not necessarily something that's on the specific business of the council that night because there is an opportunity to talk about resolutions when the resolutions come up we can pull them we can have discussions on them and then we can discuss them uh ordinances as they've been presented upon second reading and final adoption there's an opportunity to discuss all of that within the normal cor course of the business so i personally think that the workshop location in the agenda is totally fine um, I don't I don't agree with limiting the number of items. I don't agree with limiting the, the time associated with it. We have a saying in the military, you train to task and not to time. If we have five things that we need to discuss, it's the responsibility of the council to discuss all five things. If it takes us two hours, it takes us two hours. If it takes us 15 minutes, it takes us 15 minutes. I don't think we should, we should assign um, subjective uh, limits onto these kind of workshop items. To that point, though, um, I think what we do need to do is we need to define specifically what is appropriate for workshop um, and get a little bit of guidance on what can actually fit on the agenda. That it's not just this, this open toolbox that we can just put anything in and say, well, I would really like to discuss this and it doesn't really fit in anything in my report or things like that. So I think we do have to at least more narrowly tear uh, narrowly tailor what we are permitted to add onto the workshop from the council standpoint and from the administrator's standpoint. Can we okay. defer to the attorney on that from in his experience what he's seen other towns do as far as workshops? Maybe if I, I don't think we've done anything yet that's gone outside the scope of what should be included. No, no. And and normally I, I, I would agree with what council president Delong said. The, the normal practice is that these are these are things that are are Pending is your question about whether the workshop should be before or after the resolutions? Is that what you're? I'm okay if it doesn't move, uh, but then I just need to understand that there is actually a defined point in this, and if it hasn't historically been the way, the last few meetings we've allowed for it. I just need to know specifically when we're doing an ordinance, right? So is it first reading? Is it second reading? Is it before public? Is it after public? Because sometimes we, we see these and we see them on our agenda, but we haven't had a chance to really understand where they're coming from. Or Normally you would want to do it during first reading. Um, and it would be after it is um, moved and seconded, you can have a discussion. That's, that's typically the practice discussion and then a roll call. Okay, so I'm okay with that as long as we do allow for discussion for ordinances yeah. that we have questions on. Yeah, and I actually to that point, I think it's been prior guidance that you don't have discussion upon first reading. Um, it's just an introduction and then you let it sit. If the guidance now is that we can, I would definitely like to see that. Can we, can we just double check agenda. that? Yeah, I will. I will. My, my reasoning there is that if you do it during the second, it's too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to start over again. Yes. Right. Um, That's correct. But I will, I will, I will confirm that with everyone. Okay. Okay. Council, Council Bevin, you had something? No, I'm good, yeah. Mayor. Council. No, I agree with the uh, the ordinance issue, just like with the lead tonight, because uh, for issues. So I I do agree with that, and I'm fine with the two two a month, and I think we're reasonable people. And if we see it's getting heated, we have to just you know tailor it to 
what 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 is what is productive anyway. So I, I'm fine with it. All right, but going back to Council President's uh, point, I don't know if Michael or the attorney or us or we if he's asking for guidelines on how we present things on that, who would come up with that? Uh, well, but are are we are you saying that we can't talk about specific things? So if we have questions, we what? can't because if this is the only way, like especially like so, I'm the newest member and I don't know how particularly everything runs. So if I have a question, I just I can't put it on here and, and I think it, I, I think it has at least from my opinion from my from my viewpoint is it has to be geared towards some kind of program or action or things like that for example uh, and I'm going to use Councilman Ben Benin's point of he attended this this webinar on Viking pedestrian mm -hmm. safety what if if Councilman Benin has has an item to add to the workshop that says I want to, I'm interested in initiating, let's say, a bike and pedestrian safety committee. Let's have that discussion. That's fine. That, that's an actionable item. If Councilman Bennon says, I want to generally discuss bike and pedestrian safety in the borough of Pompton Lakes, well, now we're in this nebulous concept of not, this conversation isn't really going anywhere. It's too broad. It doesn't really lead to any specific thing. That's, I think, what, what I would like to see avoided. I think and, we, and how know that. we haven't really gone out. No, we haven't gone out of that, but I also want to make sure that we don't get into that at that point. I think that would probably just have to be an, an understanding with the council. How do you say you're not allowed to talk about? You know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. and that's by by defining by defining what we how and what we can talk about in workshop it gives us proper guidance to say mm -hmm. if i want to talk about bike and pedestrian safety i have to come to the table and have a specific item that i want to discuss that's related to an actual program or, or physical improvement or something like that so perhaps we can do that behind the scenes if if the borough administrator feels that something's been brought to the attention of workshop that either needs to be refined or maybe not discussed we can kind of work it out before it hits the agenda the only issue with that I have is, and I don't want to, I don't want to use the term ego, but I want, but I, I want to be very careful. Is if any of us ask to the point of saying, well, I want to see this on the workshop, and then Michael says, well, that's not really appropriate for workshop. Well, we don't have any guidance on what's appropriate for workshop, so why are you unilaterally deciding what's okay for workshop or, or not? And I agree if we set up guidelines, specific guidelines to say this is these are the kind of topics and or at least the method of topics that we should be discussing then we walk in the door and we're not asking to have xyz added on knowing that um and and having somebody make the determination well no we shouldn't put that on so actionable uh, actionable items and guidelines on on executing business because that's i mean i think i mean again like i'm not i don't want to limit to only that I mean, I'm going to leave leave it to our professionals to kind of come up with those guidelines and at least present it to the council for our consideration. But I think we have to start somewhere, and I just don't want to leave this as an the open email. form. Either. All right, so Michael, can you put together something like that? Yeah. So, so I we'll, think what we'll, we'll do is that thing would be like a guideline of doing business. Sure. sure. So I, sorry. I think so what we'll do is I'll work with the borough attorney. We'll try to find some comparable ordinances in some surrounding towns and see if we can come up with some sort of uh, of uh, definition. Uh, for consideration for a possible ordinance amendment. Okay, good. All right. And uh, thank you for your comment about what, whatever the time is, the time is. You yeah, know, I, I mean, appreciate that. We're I mean, here to do a job. 2010, we had council meetings that ran some midnight because of the we did. Issue. We're we here did. to do a job regardless of how long it takes. Um, Borough uh, Forrester, you want to just an update on that? We're going to cover that uh, under contract negotiations in closed Close session. session. Okay. Uh, the tree ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. I will defer that one to the borough attorney. So for the governing body, the from the last council meeting, I guess there was a, some concerns about the uh, uh, burdensome of, of the ordinance on the residents. So the borough attorney looked at our existing ordinance that we adopted a few meetings ago and has some possible suggestions with regards to verbiage to possibly lessen the burden on our residents. So I'll let him go through it. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You should have a red line copy of the ordinance. And those revisions are based upon the conversation we had at our last workshop meeting. And also on the, uh, the email, the May 16th email we received from Michelle Hovind. Um And essentially, just going through the red line revisions, you'll see at the top of page two, um, I, I just thought that 
the hazard tree shouldn't be already causing obvious damage to structures because then it's too late, right? Mm -hmm. It should be causing or threatening damage to structures. And I don't know why Holmes was left off there, but we've had Holmes there. Um, because you want to be proactive. If the tree is, tree is dead and it's dangerous, you want to take it down lest somebody get hurt or, or property damage. Mm -hmm. um, I made clear in the definition of trees that it applies to deciduous perennial plants, not fir trees. Um, mm -hmm. There was a time in the 70s where everyone thought white pines were the perfect thing to have privacy, but all a white pine wants to be is 80 feet tall and doesn't really provide privacy. So if people come to their senses and want to cut down their white pines, they should be able to do that. Um, tree removal, um, just uh, on the on the heels of um, Councilwoman Philbert's comments, I think tree removal. We don't need to instruct people on different ways to kill trees. What we need to just say is, tree removal means to intentionally kill or cause irreparable damage to a tree, and we'll leave it to the forester to determine whether it was, you know, something intentional. Uh, applicable procedures. There was one other change. Oh yeah, okay. Dash four. There was a typo in there. We had uh, any any the a permit was required for any tree more than six inches tall. I think that's six feet. <laughs> I still would keep six inches. <laughs> um, tree removal application. Um, so I, I took out the drip line of the trees because I don't think most of our residents are going to be able to calculate the drip line of a tree um, when they're when they're in their application. So I just wrote, you know, just made it species of the tree if known, diameter, and the location of the tree and the existing structures. I think that's that's really all our. Um, all our, uh, our arborist is going to need, he's not going to need the drip line here, she's not going to need the drip line. Um, the fee for processing and tree removal. Um, the, uh, I just, you know, based upon our conversation, I just reduced that from 50 to 35. And then on the basis of that change, uh, reduce the per tree for six trees or more to $7. And then you'll see for subdivisions and major uh, developments. Um, that number was reduced from 1,860 to 1,300, and that's really just based upon the earlier changes. So that's based on $7 versus $10. Um, moving down, uh, just some, you know, clarification, six inches or more. Uh, in place. That's it for really the substantive changes. Well, this one, or this one here on the violations, what, what you pulled out each tree. So we're just finding one offense, one maximum yes. offense. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if that's a maximum, then whatever you do. Correct. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> per property. Per property. Per property. Yeah. So if you did it and six years later, something else is wrong with that property and you hit the thousand already, you're still done? Is no, there a time no. I think no, it means it's, it's no. per offense, but but per property, like not per tree. It's going to be if you clear cut your yard, that's the fee. It's uh, yeah. Okay. If you cut down one tree, it's a thousand dollars. If you cut down five trees, it's a thousand dollars. Okay. Right. So we thank you, Dave. So we took we took some suggestions. These are these are our suggestions. Uh, you'll see a memo from our uh, stormwater management consultant, essentially confirming that our our. Uh, grace period that we adopted at the last council meeting was good and and will lessen the burden on our residents i'm working with our n new soon to be forester to come up with an educational program for the residents and other than that she seems to indicate that our fees are in line and we're basically doing everything else that any other town is doing so Again, we feel that maybe some of these changes could be beneficial, so that's our recommendation. Anybody and okay? Is everybody okay with these changes? Yes. Yes. They all seem reasonable, yeah. yeah. All right, so then we can incorporate those in. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it just explained to me now this is going to now come up back to resolution. 
No, it will, it'll be um, an ordinance for first reading at our next meeting. Oh, oh okay. And right. we'll have time to talk to the Shade Tree Commission about what, what well, we Well, it won't happen until our next meeting, two weeks from now. Oh, okay. Sure. So then we'll be able to talk. I'll, I'll provide a copy of the red line version to the commission and Would to you yourself. do that? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we'll get you there. Okay. Uh, Kevin. Good. Yeah. Kevin, motion to open the meeting for public comment. Motion. Council, Council uh, President DeLine, Councilwoman, who was that? Uh, Paul Dory. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Randy Hitton, 443 Montclair Avenue. In that discussion with your new ordinance, um, any fines for the contractor like I brought up last time? Is there any discussion on that? Or is that in the ordinance at all? Um, also, uh, when Councilman Begg was here, he used to give a report from the police department, fire department, and first aid on calls and different things that happened in town. Um, God rest his soul, he's gone. Um, is that going to continue? It doesn't seem to. Or could somebody do that? And um, just along with shade tree also, uh, Columbia Bank donated another tree to the town. And uh, it was planted at the dog park by the DPW. I was just wondering if you ladies were going to have a dedication on that tree or, or what was going to go on with that. I sent the pictures to Jane. Um, it was supposed to be a red, oak, a red maple. It wasn't. It's a October glory maple, which will turn red in the fall. So right now, it's in, it's in the center of the two red maples, so it looks, it looks nice. It'll be framed nicely. But we'll have to wait till the fall for the mall. All right, that's it. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to address? Seeing no one, can have a motion to close the public session. So moved. Uh, Second. Council Second. President Dwine, Councilwoman uh, Kilwork, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Fines for contractors. I do think that was a good point. Is that something we want to put in there? We can, we can add that. Uh, is everybody good with that, adding that? Yes. I think that is a good so point. It, just to be clear, it would be in addition to fines in addition. for property owner. Yes. Yes. Is that how everybody sees it? Because, yes. you know, I think Mr. Hinton has brought up before, sometimes the contractors don't know what they're doing either. So well, let's uh, make sure we can do that. Uh, calls. Uh, that's up to the uh, liaison how they want to present. Uh, I, you know, if they decide they want to do it that way, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. Um, it's not something that's required, but I'll ask them. Uh, the tree dedication. Let me talk to Gene if he's willing to wanting to do something, and then I'll get hold of everybody and see where we're going to go with that. Okay. Uh, approach the floor. Any approach the floor? No. Nope. Uh, motion to go into closed session. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. I just, I just want to I just want to say that I, I'm concerned with the retesting of the lead. We have a lot of apartments in town that are older homes, and that really is a significant cost because you have to have a I believe unless I'm wrong you have to have a lead expert, uh, you know, do the testing over and over again. Once you test your home, I mean, it doesn't grow, it doesn't you know, it doesn't expand or anything. It's either there or it's not. So it makes no sense why uh, you know. And if you have tenants moving in and out. You know, sometimes tenants don't last a year, so you're going to be spending quite a bit of money. And I, I'm just concerned about our, our landlords um, and the homes and, and the apartment, uh, you know, apartment complexes that would take on a really unnecessary expense. And I understand why we have to have it. I do understand that. But that is, I'm just curious how we can get away from that aspect of it. So I think we identified, and correct me if I'm wrong, 38, was it 38, something like that, homes? There's 138. Oh, 138. Yeah. Yeah. 138 homes have been identified. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, we have to follow the state guidelines. So it is what it is. We can't change that. This is state guidelines. Yeah, I, I, I think it's nuts. And, uh, you know, I, we should I'm make good laws. We, we, we make good laws <laughs> up here. It's unfortunate that the state <laughs> the came that way. The fees and costs for that, that's at the state, that state guideline, or that's something we, we chose? No, so we actually, so the, the property owner has two options. They can either use their, they can retain their own contractor, right. or they can use ours. Right. And ours can either be an employee that gets the certification, which we do not have, and I'm going to work towards getting that done, or we retain a third-party company. But we do have to offer the service to the residents according to the law. So I did an RFP for companies, and I'm going to move it to the next council meeting uh, for consideration. But we made the fee for our contractor very high. 
because we want the property owner to do it themselves. We don't want to get involved in the business of doing lead paint inspections. No. So we made the fee high to mm -hmm. prevent that and to have them use their own contractor. Now, the cost to use your own contractor is generally around $150 oh. to, to $400, yeah, it's depending on the size of the house. Yeah. So that's that's the cost to the resident. But if we had someone on the DPW that was certified, then we could make that more cost efficient. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. So we're working towards that, hopefully over the summer. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Motion to adjourn into closed session. Motion. Mm -hmm. Council uh, President Devine, Councilwoman Aldori, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Okay. We're going into closed session, so I got to throw everybody out. In closed session, we discussed uh, negotiation with two employees. Motion to adjourn. Second. Council President Klein, Council President Vennin, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Bobby. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Liz. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.